Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted and I'm back for another Pokemon Sword and Shield VGC video. Today we're going to do something a little different. I am going to be ranking all of the Intimidators in VGC and we actually don't have too many this season. In fact, this is it. This is all we have, but I will go in depth as to why I rank them as I do. And I also made this a format that you can use on this website. I'll link that in the description down below. Do me a favor, make your own tier list and send that to me. Uh, via my Twitter, it's linked in the description down below. And also answer the comment question today, what do you think is the best and the worst Intimidator in the format? I wanna know, but yeah, as you can see, we have, also leave a like and subscribe. I need to say that because I'm a YouTuber, please. It helps me get views and we haven't been getting too many likes lately. Please love me. Anyways, so we have Arcanine, Gyarados, Hitmontop, Mawile, Quillfish, and Scrafty. Kind of an interesting group of them. Obviously, I feel like right off the bat, you guys can tell which ones are better and which ones are worse, but I'll be explaining why for those of you who are new to the format. I'm going to be going from left to right. Now, Arcanine is kind of interesting uh, in the fact that he's the best one. <laughs> so Arcanine's really cool. He gets access to a wide variety of moves. Let me actually switch over to the team builder here on Showdown. So if you look at Arcanine, he gets a whole bunch of moves. He gets access to Helping Hand. He gets access to Will-O-Wisp. He's also an extremely powerful fire type with 110 attack and access to flare blitz. And on top of that, he can have protect or even morning sun. Morning sun is actually a really cool move because uh, if the sun is out, he actually gains 75% HP instead of 50%. And if it's raining, he gets 25%. So with Arcanine, if you decide to Gigantamax it to set up the sun, you're actually able to uh, not only you know boost your HP stat temporarily, but afterwards with the sun up, you'll gain even more with morning sun. So there are lots of sets you could run on Arcanine. You could run like a leftover set. You could run an offensive set. You could run even like a Rocky Helmet set for some reason if you felt like being out there. Um, but to be honest, Arcanine is undoubtedly the best Intimidator in this format. While it doesn't have access to Fake Out like two of the other Intimidators, this thing is insane. Pure Fire type is such a good defensive typing. You're only weak to Rock, Water, and Ground. And while all those are very, very common in VGC, you know, not a lot of Pokemon are, <laughs> not a lot of Pokemon are, how do I say it? Not every Pokemon on the team is going to be carrying those moves. So there are many safe switches. You can switch in on fighting types easily because they're usually physical attackers. You can intimidate them and live the hit. And you're able to burn them later on with Will-O-Wisp. On top of that, you can help out your opponent by dealing damage with Helping Hand. And you can deal your own damage with Flare Blitz. Or, you know, and also Citrus Berries. I completely forgot to mention Berries. In fact, Arcanine was undoubtedly the best Intimidator in VGC 17 because of the fact that it was that it had access to Pinch Berries as well as a... Let me get this out. Pinch Berries as well as a move that can deal recoil, making it easy for Arcanine to get in range of its berry on its own, not having to rely on the opponent dealing the damage necessary for it. So that's honestly really cool. On top of that, bulk-wise, he's got 90 HP, 80 defense, 80 special defense, and that defense stat is only boosted by the fact that it has Intimidate. And you can even boost that special defense stat by running Snarl. You can lower your opponent's special attack. So this Pokemon has nothing to sleep on. It's a really great Pokemon. It pairs well with other Intimidators like Gyarados. So yeah, honestly, nothing to sleep on. Arcanine is one of the best Pokemon in the format, hands down. As for the next Pokemon, Gyarados. He's kind of a tough one. I'd put him between A and S. Personally, as an Intimidator, I'd put him as A, but as a Pokemon, I would put him as S. Um, but as a regular Pokemon, it can run other things. I know Moxie's been running around, which is very flattering, guys. Thank you. Uh, Moxie Gyarados has been running around because it's able to Dragon Dance, go for a Gigantamax moves, and raise its attack stat even more. So that's really cool. On top of that, if you run Bounce, you're able to get a speed boost. But that's not what we're talking about right now. We're talking about this thing purely as an Intimidator. And Gyarados is really cool. Uh, water Flying is not the best defensive typing. You're weak to a lot of things, and you have a lot of neutral hits as well. Not too many resistances, but you are ground immune, which is why it pairs so well with Arcanine. If you want to have two Indimidators on a team, I would highly recommend these two. Um, but as for support moves, I think it's Icy Wind, so that's something, I guess. No one's really going to run that, though. It doesn't get too many support moves, really. Um, taunt is nice. Being able to stop things... Uh, from setting up Trick Room on you or burning you is very, very important. But uh, just the matter of fact that it itself can function as an offensive Intimidator 
is all it really needs. On top of that, it has amazing special bulk, 95 HP, 100 special defense. And while 79 defense is, you know, technically less than Arcanine's, uh, it has higher HP and it's able to intimidate to raise that effectively. Uh, but yeah, this thing functions less so as a support intimidate Pokemon and more as an offensive intimidate Pokemon that has an easier time setting up because of it. Gyarados definitely sitting comfortably in A tier, possible S tier, but I think Arcanine is leagues ahead of him in terms of just being a pure intimidator. Next up, we have Hitmontop. And Hitmontop, I would comfortably place Hitmontop in B tier. Uh, and something else is going to join it in B tier. Uh, but the reason that Hitmontop sits in B tier is because uh, fairy type moves are more common than ever in this format. Uh, purely because of the fact that play rough has become a TR. So Arcanine now has a way of hitting it for super effective damage. And being a physical attacker that is not burn immune uh, makes it very hard for this thing to get off damage. However, I could make a case for it sitting in A tier. Um, I'd say it sits more between these tiers, but I'll put it in B tier for now just to show that uh, you know, this thing is just a little bit ahead of it. This thing functions better as a support intimidator for a couple of reasons. It has access to so many great moves. It gets fake out to allow flinches in the first turn. Granted, they don't dynamax or have psychic train up. It gets faint to break protects, allowing things to, uh, hit Pokemon that were trying to block the damage. It gets access to close combat, which is just its best offensive move. I'm just going to put that out there. It also has access to wide guard, which is very, very cool. You can block things like Earthquake, Rock Slide, and Rock Slide has been tearing up the the ladder recently. Not that it hasn't always been, but Excadrill, Tyranitar are undoubtedly one of the most deadly combinations of Pokemon in this format and in previous formats. So being able to stop them from getting possible flinches off with Dragon Dance, Rock Slide on the Tyranitar, and just Sand Rush boosted Rock Slide from Excadrill is really, really important. On top of that, he just takes on the pair very well. He intimidates both of them, and he's able to deal with them with close combat, one-shotting both of them. Like, you can close combat the Excadrill first to KO, and then even at minus one, you're going to KO that Tyranitar because of the times four. He also gets access to Helping Hand, which definitely makes him a lot like Arcanine. He has a lot of really useful tools, but um, he's he's really interesting. Uh, I've seen people run a Jack button. Wolf Glick sort of popularized that with his 2016 set that he won the world championships with. But personally, I always felt that Hitmontop functions best with an assault vest because of its um, high special defense. You can really maximize on that and sort of just make like a pure offensive assault vest set that's able to take hits while also dealing with um, Pokemon that uh, want to go for spread moves uh, or not want to go for spread moves. While also dealing with those Pokemon that want to go for spread moves like... Um, Tyranitar and Excadrill without having to directly block those spread moves. So it's able to go for close combat. It's able to have feint and fake out still, which is really cool support. But that last move, because it can't be a support thing like um, Wide Guard or Helping Hand, you end up having sort of like a weird situation where you have a lot of really good options. You could run Bulldoze to lower their speed or something like that. But a lot of people will opt to go for something like Sucker Punch, uh, which is really nice. Uh, I personally feel like that's, you know, one of the better sets, but... If you want to use it as like a pure support Pokemon with wide guard, then I would suggest running uh, either Leftovers or a Pinch Berry. In this format, I'd highly recommend Citrus, mostly because the Pinch Berries are now only dealing or only giving you 30% health back. Uh, so it's not exactly the best. But yeah, uh, Hitmontop, somewhere between A and B. Somewhere between there. I would say the same goes for Scrafty. Uh, as for being in B tier, but I don't think I can make a I don't think I can make a case for it sitting in A tier. Um, because Scrafty actually lost a tool this format, which is really, really important. Uh, it no longer gets access to knockoff, which used to be a really, really cool move. It was able to remove items from Pokemon, which it could be anything from a berry to leftovers to, uh, well, not a focus hash, but like uh, a choice band or a choice scarf. Uh, and that was really, really important. But now that it's lost that, it's definitely not as viable as Hitmontop was. However, it still gets access to fake out. It still gets access to close combat. It's able to snarl the opponents. So uh, sort of as a support move, you can go for snarls to lower their special defense in the same way that Arcanine does. Um, and it's also able to have a coverage move like Poison Jab to help deal with fairies. So more so than Hitmontop, this Pokemon is best with an Assault Vest because it doesn't have any... It, it supports Pokemon with moves that deal damage. So you're able to afford to not run uh, those wide guards... <laughs> because he doesn't have it of course you're able to ignore things like 
hit Montop's Dilemma with the moveset because he is sort of a, a limited limited pool of options. However, if you do opt to not run that Assault Vest, I would suggest having Taunt on there to prevent Trick Room. And also, he can function as a Trick Room Pokemon because of how slow he is. But overall, his bulk is actually greater than uh, Hitmontop's, with Hitmontop having 50, 95, and 110, and Scrafty having 65, 115, 115. So he's overall bulkier, but as you can see, he deals slightly less damage with his 90, uh, his 90 attack. And also, he has less support options um, in regards of blocking damage. But really cool. Uh, one of the things that kind of makes him drop down, though, is that huge fairy weakness. He's also weak to other fighting types, so Scrafty would have sort of a 50-50 versus opposing Scrafties and not deal well with opposing Hitmontop. So if your opponent is running a Hitmontop and you're running a Scrafty, you need to play him very carefully. But yeah, um, Scrafty sitting in B tier pretty pretty definitively in B tier where Hitmontop can go up and down. Scrafty's definitely going to be sitting in B tier. Uh, next up we have Quillfish, which I would put at C tier. Uh, the lowest tier besides the one I'm about to get to. Let's take a look at Quillfish. Now the reason Quillfish is not a great Intimidate Pokemon is because he does he just does not have the bulk for it. Quillfish does not have the bulk to be an Intimidate Pokemon. Gyarados, while being an offensive Pokemon, is still able is still pretty bulky. It's got 95 HP, 79 defense, and 100 special defense, so he can still take hits, right? Where Quillfish just can't. He's got 65 HP, 85 defense, and 55 special defense. That is abysmal. While Quillfish does have some pretty cool tools. You know, it can Toxic things, which a lot of Pokemon lost Toxic in this format. It can Haze Away stat changes. Um, it can Scald Burn. It can do all that. It can Taunt. It can Thunder Wave. While it can do all of that, it's missing the bulk. And it functions much better as a Swift Swim Pokemon. Because it's, you know, it's one of the rare Pokemon that gets Poison Stab in Swift Swim. In fact, I think it might be the only one. Let me check. It's literally just Quillfish. So that's its one niche. It's able to deal with fairy types in the rain pretty well. Um, it's able to deal with Ludicolo. Ludicolo does not lay a finger on this thing if you're able to EV it in a way where you're not too scared of Energy Ball. So that's really what it does. It's more of a Swift Swim Pokemon than anything. It can't really function that well as an Intimidator. So if you're trying to find an Intimidator, I do not recommend Quillfish by any means. The last Pokemon we have is Mawile, which sits pretty comfortably in Mawile tier. I, I was thinking about A tier, but Mawile tier makes a little more sense. Uh, possibly C tier, but honestly, I, something's calling me towards Mawile tier, which is, it's my absolute lowest tier. Mawile, one of the saddest nerfs we've ever seen. Mawile used to be a pretty decent Intimidate Pokemon because it had that Mega option. Mega Mawile. It lost its Intimidate, but it gained 125 defense uh, 50 HP, 95 special defense, and 105 attack it doubled by a huge power. So it worked as an offensive intimidator. But now that that's gone, what is it left with? 50 HP, 85 attack, 85 defense, 55 special defense. Like Quillfish, it does not have the bulk to be an intimidator. Even more so, it has less tools than that Pokemon. Let's look at everything this thing can do. Taunt. Helping hand. And that's about it. I have never seen a sunny day Mawile. Do not try to run it. Uh, this thing literally cannot function in competitive. If you want to run Mawile, by all means do it, but I do not recommend it. Steel Fairy is an amazing defensive type. You're weak to ground, fire, and I think that's it. I think you're just weak to ground and fire. So that's an amazing defensive type. But it doesn't matter when a Scald from Inteleon of all Pokemon will knock you out. This thing is sad. It, it is sad how bad it is. Um, I, I don't see any way this thing can have any redeeming any redeeming qualities as an Intimidator Pokemon. Maybe with sheer force boosted player off you could do something, but then you're dropping Intimidate, so it's you know disqualified from the list. But that's my rankings. S tier, Arcanine. A tier, possibly S tier, uh, Gyarados. B tier, Hitmontop. And Scrafty with Hitmontop sort of sticking into A tier. C tier for Quillfish and Mawile comfortably in Mawile tier. I want to know what you guys think about this list. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Should a Pokemon be higher or lower? And if you guys want to send me your own list, the link to make this list will be in the description down below. Tweet it to me. Share it with me in the Discord, which is also linked down below. Uh, but yeah, I really appreciate every everyone that's been watching. All the support in the channel has been amazing. Uh, we're nearing 6,000 subscribers, which is great. But with that, I'm going to sign off, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.